Hello, once again welcome to a brand new video for this week. This is S. Sudarshan, your career coach uh, representing Right Careers. In, ca in case you have uh, subscribed to my channel, thank you. And in case you haven't, do subscribe. It's www.youtube.com slash right careers, a one stop solution for all your career needs. Moving on to this week's topic, I have taken a topic called careers in a cabin crew or cabin crew as a career. Now, what is cabin crew? It's nothing but if you are a boy, you are called as male stewardship or if you are a girl, you are called as air hostess. So basically, it's nothing but career as an air hostess or flight crew or cabin crew. That's what we call. So we will see what are what is this career all about and what are the uh, what is that you have to do as a student to become an air hostess or flight steward. Uh, what are the salaries that you get once you finish this course? Uh, what are the pros and cons as usual? We will go one by one. So what is what is the what are the responsibilities to begin with? If you are a, if you are an air hostess or if you are a flight steward, you will have a responsibility, right? The primary primary responsibility of an air hostess is to ma maintain the comfort, safety, and welfare of all the passengers. So that's the primary you know responsibility. You have to maintain the comfort of the passengers. You have to maintain the welfare of the passengers at the same time the safety of the passengers. And in case of any emergency arrangements you are you will be the center point for all the in-flight activities that surrounds the aircraft during both on ground as well as when it's flying so this is the primary responsibility of a narrow stress or a flight steward now we will see how to become a cabin crew so we call it as cabin crew how do you become an arrow stress or how do you become a flight steward there are two ways of doing you actually need not become a graduate to get into uh, an arrow stress right you can finish your 10th or 12th and still become an air hostess. How? There are several programs in all the cities. Perhaps all the tier 1 and tier 2 cities will have. There are several programs. A short 6 months program where you can take. Uh, it will be certified by IATA. You can Google it in your own uh, computer and then see. Say Google like uh, uh, training for air hostess. If you Google like that, you will get the institutes. Find out, do a small research and get enrolled. Ideally, it's a 6 months course post which you will be eligible to work in any of the airlines if you are a major so you have to become a major first of this you have to complete 18 years of age once you finish you can do a six month certificate program and then get selected this is one way the second way is if you want to pursue a graduation do any graduation any degree you can do ideally a hotel management graduate say bachelor's in hotel management because you learn the art of customer service in hotel management so you finish that and then get into uh, the flight stewardship or air hostess. So this, this is how you become an air hostess or flight attendant. Some of the top institutes uh, that, that uh, trains for this program, uh, All India Institute for Aeronautics, it's based out of Uttarakhand and then you have Frankfurt, it's there everywhere. Uh, in Chennai, you have a private institute called Orion Flight School. It's a very popular school. So some of the you know institutes, as I have told you before, all you need to do is Google and then do a very small research and get to know both these institutes. Look at the faculty, look at the training track record and the placements. That's it. Now, once you uh, finish this, it's very important that you have you possess some skill sets for this for this uh, particular career. You need to have some skill sets. What are those? We will see. The first skill set that's required for this career is you have to be physically very much eligible physical and cosmetic eligible we call the physical and cosmetic eligibility is essential so what is physical eligibility you minimum anyone be it a boy or a girl your height should be five feet and two inches that's the minimum criteria to get into a stewardship or aerostress and then you need to have a very clear eyesight right because you will see far distance with regards to the passengers inside so you your eyesight needs to be very very clear uh, at the time of becoming an air hostess you need to be unmarried now once you become an air hostess it's up to you to get married that's a different question but at the time of job you need to be, be unmarried and you also need to be medically fit because you fly uh, about thousands and thousands of miles and therefore you need to be medically fit to fly and also you need to possess a very pleasing personality you uh, your personality should be pleasing i'm not saying you need to be handsome beautiful that's not it has to be a pleasing personality some of the etiquettes your speech should be very very clear in what you communicate it, it has to be spot on languages definitely yes you need to know uh, you need to be very good at english you also it, it's it's good if you know some other language like uh, your regional language or hindi so if you if, if you travel in any of the private aircraft these days they, you get an announcement right the cabin crew here speaks english 
Tamil, Hindi, Malayalam, so on and so forth. So, for all practical purpose, it's advisable to know all the some languages other than English, preferably. You need to be a strong team player in this case. You, you must have seen how air hostess or stewards serve food. When they serve food, this, sometimes passengers used to get up and go to the, go for the restroom. So you need to be patient. You need to be team player. You need to make them go. You need to get the food from other part of the you know flight and then serve. So you got to be highly you know team player in nature. And then see this also involves ability to take swift decisions. When there is an emergency, you cannot sit and think what to do. You have to take decisions and it has to be a swift in nature, fast in nature. Above all, you need to have a very strong presence of mind. You need to know how to act in situation in case of emergency. Who will you rescue first? Children and women. So that pecking order is something you need to know. You need to use your presence of mind and common sense. So these are some of the etiquettes that are required for becoming a flight steward or air hostess. Now work description, ideally once you are an air hostess or flight steward, what you do is you do all the pre-boarding and post-boarding uh, things like you need to get the list of passengers in case they have uh, you know uh, opted for food services or beverages you need to serve them in the seat so entire you know in and out of uh, the customers uh, name list you need to have pre-boarding announcement post boarding announcement landing announcement where the luggages baggage come in the respective belt these are some of the announcement that you have to make in case there are passengers with special needs you need to take care of them you need to prioritize them and obviously, you need to serve the refreshment in case you are flying. You need to serve refreshment and then take the billing, swipe the card. These are some of the typical role for a flight steward. Now, what are the pros? Now, moving into the advantages of this profession. I think the biggest advantage of this profession is networking. Because you, when you fly above, you get people from all walks of life. You will sometimes see Dhoni or you will sometimes see Kohli. You will sometimes see politicians. You will sometimes see your chief minister Modi or any chief minister, big, big shots, who's in who of industry, Ambani. So anyone can come, you know, in, uh, and you'll get to know, you can get, get to see some larger than life personality and then network with them and then it's up to you. And then if you're in a position, you know, number two is it, it generally helps in your personality development because you are at the center of things, your personality really, you know, it, it develops. Some of the perks, I should be talking about this perk because I come from an airline family. My mother used to work with Air India, Indian Airlines. Therefore, the perks that these companies give are tremendous. The kind of free passes that they give for family is phenomenal. So you get to fly for free 12 times a year, 15 times a year, even post retirement benefits, tremendous medical benefits. If you're an arrow stress, it's quite high. So that's a great benefit that you get out of this. The salary part, it's really high. Trust me, if you're a, if you're a uh, reputed air hostess or flight steward you can draw salary up to 2 lakhs per month these days so that's the kind of salary that you know people get if you are a established air hostess and more importantly above all these things I think there is absolutely no boredom or no routine in this work one day you fly to Delhi the next day you'll be in Sydney the next day you'll be in Los Angeles so you know the kind of boredom Monotomy is very very less. You get to meet new people. Every day is new for you. Every flight is new. So that's that's the, these are some of the pros that you see in this profession. As like all the other profession, there are some disadvantages associated with this with this profession. We will see what are those. The first things I think it involves. I mean, you easily get tired in this profession because the long flying hours will. I mean, you cannot sit right. Only during takeoff and landing you will sit. All the other time you will be standing. So you need to walk inside the small passage in the flight. So the tiredness will be there. You will be, you will severely be, uh, you know, and you will be facing severe fatigue in this profession. You will easily get fatigued because of long flight. More um, point to us, you have to deal with passengers from different temperament. Some of the passengers will be really nice, really sweet, and some of the passengers will be really really hard nut to crack. They'll be very rude you know in international flights you serve liquor and in case the liquor goes up you know what happens so you know you need to deal with all walks of people with all temperament you know just because you're narrow says people will take you for granted so these these are some of the advantages that you disadvantages that you possess in this career the salary even though i said it's a pro it's also a con because these days with the advent of new flights and a lot of new airlines you know a lot of people get recruited and the salary the starting salary in this profession is relatively less so once you establish sky is the limit but to establish it takes a lot of time and then you know at the beginning the, the, the salary that is paid is relatively less when you compare with other profession 
Fourth disadvantage, if you ask me, is the early retirement. You cannot, I mean, the ideal age to uh, enter this position, uh, this profession is from 18 to 21. So this is when the company recruits you. If you are beyond 21, it's very difficult to, for the company that they will recruit you. So if you want to become an aerostat, get into the job by 21 uh, years of age. The retirement also is very, very fast because 10 years you can fly beyond that, they will deboard you. It's not that they're going to send you out. Uh, they will ground you and then give you an administrative role. So the flying will, will come down. You will do some other work. That's, that's a drawback. Most important fifth point is you will develop a lot of bad habits, bad eating habits because you fly in day, you fly in night and you fly in daylight zones. Uh, what is night here could be uh, morning in the USA. So your food habits change, your cosmetic of your body changes, your digestive system changes. So these are some of the drawbacks of this profession. Now, having said that, if you want to make a very good short career, if you want to become a uh, work for a glamorous industry, it looks glamorous at least from outside. Uh, definitely, you can consider this as a career because uh, IATA, the governing body of all international airlines authority says India is third largest market when it comes to flying. So that's the very short stat about how the uh, you know Indian aviation industry is and with Tata, Vistara or other private airlines ruling the you know skies along with national carriers like Air India. It is only said to become, you know, very, very affordable. Affordability means more people will fly, fly and when more people fly, there will be a larger ecosystem. The employment also will grow up. So you will have good amount of demand when it comes to this profession, right? To know more about this career and to know more about any other career, you can ping me. I've given all the details below this video. Hope you enjoyed this video until next Monday with a brand new video. Thank you so much and wish you all a very happy Dashara. Thank you.